Hi everybody, welcome back. Um, brand new video today on actual facts. A lot of our videos were on Python and we're using PyCharm. So today we're actually expanding that out a little bit. I'm going to show some of my previous logic how to do it in OR. The purpose of today's video is just to kind of introduce us to OR. Look at the system, look at very, some very simple logic and just get used to the familiarity of it. Essentially, OR and Python are very, very similar. And OR is a language and environment for statistical computing and graphics. Probably, I'd say, may have better uh, statistical computing and graphics, but then Python has a lot more packages. So a lot of people use Python, a lot of, some people, a lot of people use OR. It's a matter of choice, but I wanted to kind of branch out a bit and give a bit more flavor to exactly what it's about. One good thing about OR is what you can do is you can actually run a Python scripts within OR. Uh, I've done one already, um, some some tests of it, so I will be doing my next video will be on that. So to start off um, today, we downloaded um, a package called OR Studio. So to, in order to run OR, there's two things you need to do. I'll just take you here. So you need to go to OR. Okay, and I think some software from OR you need to download. So you can go in here and have a look at the links. So I would recommend that. And then obviously you need to download OR. I recommend to get that as well. There's a free version, I think, in here somewhere. It's open source. Yeah, it's free. So what the nature of uh, the video today that I'm running will be using those two packages. Okay, so let's just kind of look around the kind of the screen first before we get into the code. Code's very straightforward. So I've created an OR file here. Okay, and it's I've basically created a project and within that it's called an OR file. So this is my simple OR file. But you can there's different types of files you can create. Um, so I can create a new file. I can cut a markdown, a plumber API, shiny web. There's, there's lots of different ones so I'm not going to go into them now. But um, I will go through them in, in for in other um, videos. But for the moment, for today, keep it simple. Uh, we're doing a, a, a simple, uh, an OR file, a simple OR script. So the file I've opened up is this simple here. So what happens is when you create your project, um, it's best practice I would suggest is to keep all your projects and all your files within the one folder. So if I was going to do my next video, I would have a different folder here. So this folder is called Introduction to OR, but my next video uh, will have a different name, but all the files relate to that video and that project will be in there. What happens here as well is it creates a file called a OR project file, and that holds a lot of the settings for that particular file program. So every time you, I would recommend every time you're doing a new, a new project, just create one of them. So every time you go back to it, it always has the settings and everything associated with that. It just makes your life a lot easier and a lot simpler to basically go back and see what everything is about and how you've configured stuff. I have a folder in here called Orange Joe, just open this up. And this is just, I'm not going to go into it, but it's kind of a history of what I've been doing basically to develop this. So that as well gives you a background. So today, before we start anything, um, this folder is empty here on the right. So this is kind of like your project folder and everything associated as I said, with the project is going to be in here. So if you create any files or you want to import any files, you'll see them in there. And it's best to keep them there. Now you probably could say as an example, we're going to be using this in a second import text. You probably could put it in a different folder, but then in the code, you'd have to reference that. So if you have the file in your actual folder where the project is stored, if you don't give it a, um, a reference to where it's stored, it will automatically go to the project folder first to look for it. So that's very handy, so you don't have to put in any um, long uh, paths in your code to actually point to that particular folder. Okay, so today what we're going to do is going to create some variables, add variables together, write variables to a file, send variables to CSV, removing the headings and the row names, send variables to a text file, send variable text file removing the headings of the rows and then import the file so the file we're going to import is this so when the code all runs what will happen is you're going to see a number of other files populate in here so it's pretty instantaneous which is good actually it's great one thing i like about it is you can kind of see when things happen it kind of happens straight away and you don't have to do a refresh here so 
this is going to be pretty straightforward if um you know if you've been doing program for a while or you've kind of even just getting your hands dirty just to kind of figure out things so i've created two variables a and b here and c so when this code runs you're going to see this pop you should see this populated over here and it's going to just basically the good thing about it is it shows you the output of any calculations or any variables you've created so the next thing then is it's going to basically take these three variables and it's going to write them to this file here so this is right very very straightforward it's actually quite easy and it's going to call the files a b and c so we'll see them over there um and then we're basically what we're going to do is say okay again we're just going to send a to a uh, file name dot csv just going to call a file name very straightforward um the reason we say write table is it does it the same here but if you want to start doing things like the next row, row headings, false, or columns heading false, write table does the job a lot better. Write the CSV, the properties, and the and so on and so forth, there are not available. It's not too easy to do. So it's recommended actually if you want to do any of that, you do it to write table. So that's why we're doing it there. So if we go down here again, we've got write table. This time we're moving all headies, headings and column names. So we're just putting the row names equal to false, column names equal to false. So this time around, we're going to send it to the um, a text file. And obviously text files, what we're going to do is just put the separator in. So basically this will come up here because it's only going to be C. It's only going to be one file, one number. It's, it's not going to be to it's got straightforward so but normally if you had a number of um characters in that variable you would have to put obviously the limiter there usually it's a comma but um, you can as as you see it fit uh, change that next thing we'll do is we're going to go send the output to the txt removing all the headings and columns so similar to what we did up here except again we're just going to, have to separate it because it's a txt file and just call it row names false and column names equals false and then we're going to import a text file and we're going to do the import file and it's basically going to read the table import text so it's just going to bring this in one thing to note um which is something i i noticed here as well is that when you are normally i would have put say an equal sign there but in or you put the less than and then a hash to kind of say the sign of value to the variable so this is basically saying when you read this table um import assign it to import table as a variable and then we're just going to print the imported file so that's before we run this code that's the actual import so one two three four five okay so that's pretty straightforward so one thing i'm going to do here is going to highlight all the text okay and what's going to happen is this is going to populate this is really just more output and it gives you information and sometimes if you have problems or errors with the code it will give it to you there you're going to see this populated and you're going to see this populated here with the file so if i just run this okay brilliant so we'll just go down to the console very quickly all it is is outputting the code and the logic if you had any problems which is um code it would show it here throw up errors and most likely if it had problems this wouldn't populate properly and this wouldn't populate properly so there that last line uh, print import file is the one two three four five that's what that is so that kind of validates the base we know what's it's worked correctly because we knew it was one two three four five in this file over here um the a b and c the variables have populated over here okay so that's basically that's that's just showing you the different variables if so be it sandy suppose if you're working through the code and you want to see what values are in the logic and created variables you could reference this and then you could write that in your code to reference those knowing you've got the right values or whatever values you wanted to populate in here so finally then it's actually created the files we discussed over here through all these different um, lines here so all these some lines really from 14 if we go down here so these lines all the way down to here okay so if i just basically if i show you them quickly um you can just do a view file here okay so that's a.csv that's b so these are the variables okay c3 okay then if we go to file name which is this one here so the, again it's going to be a so we should see the value of one in this okay which is one and if we go to next one's going to be remove headings 
it's three. So there we go. There's an example in, over here. Um, we've asked it to remove the headings. So we've, because of this here, when the files come in, literally it's come in, um, or when we, sorry, we've, we've written this, sorry. When we've written it out to the file, we basically said, um, just have no headings on it. Just put the, the value in of the variable in. So it's literally just shown three and that's all that is. Okay. Um, so if we go to the txt file again, look, it's, it's included the headings and it's the value three because we assigned the value as C. Okay. And if we move this again, then the txt file we've, we've asked, if we go back here, the txt file, we've asked to have no row names and no column names. All right. So that's a quick introduction into or how to run some very basic um, statements to basically add some variables, read and write it to files, and, you know, print out some stuff, print out some variables, and then um, basically imports um, some data from a text file as well. Obviously, just showing you the, the console here very generally, um, its outputs, and obviously this is the project folder to where all the files that you created to the right statements are saved. So on one screen, in a way, you can kind of see a number of different things, what's happening with the project. It's very handy like that. Um, so if these didn't create here, and we had no error here, which would be very <laughs> wouldn't would be odd, it should show you some error, you'd know there's a problem. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're also on social media and um, we're on Twitter and Facebook as well. So all these video, this video will be put up online and posted through those mediums. Hope to see you again soon and thanks for visiting Data Analytics Ireland. Take care. Bye.